All right, good afternoon, everybody. It looks like uh, most are dialed in now, and we'll go ahead and get started. Um, again, my name is Bill Rhodes. I'm the Director of Channel Sales. Um, from our support team, Gary Thomas is going to be assisting with the technical aspect of the presentation today and driving a couple of interesting demos, um, as we have later in the deck. Um, we just really quickly wanted to, to take a minute and um, update everybody that is uh, familiar with TerraStation products. Um, the new TerraStation 3010 and 5010 products have been launched in the market. They've been available uh, since January. Um, and these are the direct replacements of the very successful TerraStation 3000 and 5000 product families. Uh, many of our Resellers and uh, end user customers on the call are familiar with those. So these are the direct replacements, and we were going to talk about how they are superior and um, show you a few uh, interesting use cases as well as some uh, uh, performance oriented demos later on in the deck. So just very quickly, Buffalo, um, for those of you who are not familiar, Buffalo is a Japanese owned business. Uh, we're Pretty well founded, uh, publicly traded on the Nikkei, 40 years or more in business. Uh, but what really makes Buffalo unique is our commitment to building and delivering B2B products specifically for the SMB market. Um, many of our products are used outside of that scenario, uh, especially into the enterprise uh, level. But for the most part, a lot of the Buffalo competitors and other uh, vendors in the market are building much higher end systems that have uh, enterprise grade or very high end components and pushing those down into the SMB arena, which just simply is cost prohibitive when you get down to it. And um, a lot of times end users are left with the choice of simply overbuying for their needs. So Buffalo has done a really good job over the past uh, 12 years, 13 years of, uh, you know, uh, being in the U.S. and North American market, um, of, of being committed to the SMB. We've won numbers of awards, especially for the way that we support our partners, uh, both before the sale and after the sale. Um, so we will spend a little bit of time just uh, making sure everybody knows the Buffalo strategy isn't just to sell you a piece of hardware and uh, forget about you. So we'll share exactly uh, the benefits of the Buffalo program and and our support system. Uh, today's feature or today's presentation is going to focus primarily on our storage uh, product category in the networking uh, arena, which is our Terra Station 3010 and 5010. Again, the replacements for the 3000 and the 5000 series. Um, we are most commonly known for these type of products, but certainly Buffalo is one of the very few manufacturers left in the market that still sells a full lineup of storage products. This is an advantage for our customers that like to stay with a, within a single platform or vendor um, support. We we offer everything from an entry level single drive external hard drive or portable hard drive all the way up to 120 terabyte um, entry level enterprise network storage devices. <clears throat> Again, today's presentation is going to focus on the new TerraStation 3010 and 5010 products. Um, but just really quickly, one of the things that I wanted to cover was what is TerraStation? Um, for those of you who are familiar, you know that the TerraStation product family offers a very streamlined customer experience. Um, exactly what does that mean? It's easy to use and easy to support. Uh, very specifically, how is it easy to use? The hard drives are all included. All of our TerraStation products are shipped with hard drives in the system, and they're pre-configured with a base RAID, uh, RAID array, so you have a very simple and easy out-of-box experience, allowing you to be up and running on the network in just minutes, uh, compared to buying chassis-only products and then going out and searching and sourcing for the right hard drives yourself, and then taking those drives and turning around and uh, setting up uh, the, the RAID array, it takes quite a bit of time. Um, so specifically, a lot of our, 
our reseller partners and our MSS, MSP type partners enjoy having a very consistent, dependable uh, rollout experience when they go out to customers to deploy our products. Um, all of the terror stations start uh, at a very entry level uh, arrangement as far as a two bay option for even you know businesses that have say 10 or fewer employees but then we expand all the way up to as I mentioned previously entry level enterprise units uh, going all the way up to 120 terabyte capacities with server grade components such as the um, processors enterprise hard drives redundant power supplies um, and etc. Um, all of the rack mount units include the rail kits, again making our products very easy to use. After you buy the products you're not going to be sent to the market to go search for a two or four post rack uh, rail kit. And um, very simply, if anybody has questions before or after the sale, I mentioned that our support uh, network is very strong. Buffalo is available. We make it easy to get in touch with us. The uh, phone numbers and the contact information will be shared later in this presentation. But from a pre-sales to a post-sales support um, needs all the way through, if you're specking out your projects and you need help from a more technical, say, engineering level to make sure that you're buying the right product and that your network design is um, set up in the most advantageous way, Buffalo wants to make sure that you have a good experience with the products that you purchase. So please take advantage of the resources that are available through Buffalo to help with the correct product selection. Um, again, our support network has won numerous awards. Um, all of the terror stations are shipped with a base three-year warranty that or extends up to five years uh, if you choose to buy the optional five-year option. And on top of that, you have uh, keep your drive option. So a number of our um, customers that are dealing with very sensitive client data are unable to return or do not wish to return the hard drives for uh, warranty drive replacement. So it, with the purchase of that warranty, you're able to retain the drives and still request uh, drive replacement. So now we'll start uh, taking a, a closer look at the new 3010 and 5010 products. Um, I do want to just point out some of the key use cases for these items. We will start to take a look at uh, some of the use cases in a little bit more detail as we go through the presentation, but these are all extremely common uh, scenarios of how we see the boxes working. Um, we have received excellent feedback about the performance and the quality of both of these new product families. Uh, we mentioned earlier that these units have been shipping in the market and selling in the market since uh, mid-January of this year. We've actually had these units out in the field testing with key partners, providing us feedback for final development uh, twists and tweaks um, before we went to mass production since September of 2016. Um, and we feel very confident that these are going to be strong products moving forward and our customer base will be well positioned uh, when they take these for several years as they're using the, the products uh, in their projects. I will mention very quickly one of the unique selling advantages of Buffalo um, is our partnership and it really comes into play with a lot of small businesses. I'll mention it uh, again in just another uh, uh, couple of slides, but our partnership with NovaStore. NovaStore is a fantastic um, uh, backup software company. Um, when you buy your TerraStation products, all TerraStation products come with server grade and workstation grade licensing from NovaStore. And I will quickly mention that there are a number of handouts. I think there's three handouts um, in the handout section of the webinar. If you take a look at your console, there's a handout section there. Uh, one of the handouts is a comparison showing you the old Terra Station compared to the new Terra Station. So the old 3000 compared to the new uh, 3010 and the old 5000 compared to the, the new 5010. And then uh, the other two handouts are the technical data sheets of uh, the 3010 and the 5010 product families. 
for anybody that wants technical specs. This presentation will be a little bit higher level, so we're not going to go into as much technical detail, but we are certainly going to talk about um, some of the use case scenarios and the new feature improvements of these boxes, and that part we'll, uh, we'll turn over to Gary so he can uh, explain them from a more technical level. So the first product, uh, uh, as you would expect, that we're going to talk about is the TerraStation 5010. Um, again, this is the direct replacement for the TerraStation 5000. This system is our high-performance, scalable, business class NAS series. That's a, that's a mouthful. So we'll just take them one at a time. High performance uh, specifically is um, being met because of the higher level or higher grade of internal components uh, from the processor all the way to having native 10 gig support on the back of the units. All of these systems come with at least a single 10 gig NIC. Uh, the 2U rack mount actually features dual 10 gig NICs. Um, we're seeing a number of really high-end use cases where data and people's appetite for retaining the data is growing exponentially and people are needing to move more and more data at a faster and faster uh, pace all the time. So what we specifically did um, as the, the world starts to evolve to work more with virtualized appliances and virtualized uh, uh, servers specifically is we built these boxes to be iSCSI workhorses supporting virtualized uh, scenarios. So you could take a single server or multiple virtual servers and run concurrent large or high uh, density um, sessions without overwhelming the processor in these units, whereas in the past, um, NAS units just simply couldn't keep up when uh, the, the world started to transition to virtualized uh, scenarios. As a result, we sent all of these systems off to VMware and uh, secured VMware certification on the new uh, ESX i 6.5 uh, uh, versions uh, for both iSCSI and NFS capabilities. Um, the TerraStation 5010, it scales all the way from an entry-level two-bay box that you see in the upper right hand or upper left hand uh, image there, uh, from four terabytes and all the way up to 96 terabytes with the 2U 12-bay rack mount uh, version. What's really new about these units is that all products that ship with more than eight hard drive bays are going to start shipping partially populated as well as fully populated. So for past TerraStation customers, you know that Buffalo's strategy has always been to ship fully populated, uh, which means that all the hard drives are included. Now you have the option to buy a unit with all the hard drives or to buy a unit with at least four hard drives and then add storage as your, your storage needs grow in the future. Um, what that's going to really do is give you a platform that allows you to scale. Uh, so there we are, going back to the very beginning where we talked about the boxes being not just high performance but scalable solutions. Now you can pick a chassis and have room to grow within that chassis over time as your data storage needs grow. Um, again, very simply, uh, Buffalo is trying to be uh, a very easy to use platform, not just from the software perspective, but also from the hardware perspective. I mentioned it again, or I'll mention it again. All of the rack mount units, the 1U and the 2U options, include the rail kits. So again, if you're a customer or if you're a reseller going into a customer's environment, you don't have to worry about the accessory components. Everything's included for you. Um, to support our initiative of moving into a 10 gig platform, Buffalo brought in a line of 10 gig web managed layer two switches. What's really attractive about these, besides the starting price point, uh, for those of you who are looking at that 599 price point, 
is the lifetime warranty, the all metal premium chassis. Um, that 599 price point is for our eight port switch. Um, and our marketing department was nice enough to procure a bunch of switches. So I will provide a little teaser now and then we'll give uh, full details later in the presentation. Anyone registered for the webinar uh, today that buys a TerraStation 5010 product will be eligible to receive a free 8-port uh, 10 gig switch from Buffalo. And we'll have all the details later in the presentation for you. Um, but again, we're seeing the need for storage and high performance step down into more the SMB marketplace. And the SMB hasn't te technically started to transition yet into 10 gig. And the primary reason that for that is that it's just cost prohibitive. So we're hoping that more people will take advantage of this more cost-friendly approach with the, um, with the 10 gig switches paired with the new 5010 products that, again, have native 10 gig ports. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn the um, presentation over to Gary so he can talk about some of the new software features. Uh, one of the most important features are uh, the advanced NTFS permissions that lead to some pretty exciting enhancements on the Buffalo side, allowing greater control within your Active Directory environments. All right, thank you, Bill. Uh, once again, I'm Gary Thomas. Uh, I'm a senior technical guy here at Buffalo. I just want to touch on a few points about the uh, TerraStation 5010. First of all, you might notice that we say we had that this unit has either NAS or enterprise grade drives. The 2U12 bay will always come with inter enterprise grade drives in it. The reason for that is simply that uh, NAS class drives aren't certified to be in a chassis with more than eight spindles. So, in order to make sure that the uh, performance and the longevity of the drives stay where they should be. Uh, the 12 the twelve bay units will all have enterprise grade drives in them. I just want to touch real quick about some of the things you see there at the bottom of the screen. We'll talk a little bit about boot authentication first. So as you're probably aware, uh, all the terror stations have the ability to encrypt the data. Uh, the 310-5010 in particular now feature 256-bit AES encryption. But uh, if someone's to walk out with the whole Terra station, they still might be able to access that data. With the boot authentication, the, the system won't boot unless it's able to locate an, an authentication server on the network. And the authentication server is just a, a real simple little uh, Windows utility you can install on any Windows system. Buffalo's, the Terra station will go out and look for that uh, server. When it finds it, it'll go ahead and boot. If it doesn't find it in the instance where somebody may have walked off with the whole Terra station, then it's not going to boot and the data will not be accessible. I want to talk a little bit about our duplex firmware. If you've used Terra stations in the past, you may, be, have, you may have encountered a situation where the unit wouldn't boot, where there was an OS problem. And in many cases, that meant uh, somebody had to go on site if it was a remote site and reload the operating system onto the unit. That takes time. And in most cases, it would also usually result in a, in a loss of data. You have to start over and, and restore the data on it. With a duplex firmware, the unit still, even with an OS failure, is able to at least bring up a, come up to the point where you can access the GUI and launch a system recovery from the GUI. And that's true 90 plus percent of the time in the case of an OS failure, it's able to recover that and also again, 90 plus percent of the time, we'll come back up with the configuration saved, same users you had, all the data is intact, everything's working great. So we, we're really happy with that. The rapid RAID mode change, well, when you when you get these, as, as Bill pointed out, they will come with the drives installed and with the RAID set up already. But if you want to change the RAID type, for instance, a four drive unit comes with uh, RAID 5 by default. If you wanted to change that to say a, a RAID 10 or something else, you can see that RAID change right during the setup, and it's very quick. It'll go through and change the RAID setup and be a back up and running, ready to go, uh, completely synced within about 10 or 15 minutes. I just want to touch real quick on the 10 gig ports on these. Even if you didn't have a switch, if you grab two uh, Terra Station 5010s, you wanted to be able to back up or replicate between them, make sure you have more than one copy of the data. Even if you don't have a 10 gig switch available, 
you run a cable just between the two 10 gig ports on the terra stations themselves and run your backups and replications about 60% faster and keep it off your main network. All right, um, we want to go to All right, real quick, let me talk about uh, the Windows ACL portion. So in the past, with, a with any of our chair stations, if you wanted to set any kind of access restrictions, you could only do that at the share level with you know, your users, either from the chair station or Windows Active Directory. And anything underneath that, it, it was just, it was a, the entire share was what was applied, and it was only basic rights, either read-only or read-write access. With this unit, uh, we've introduced the ability to do full NTFS-style permissions on shares. You can pull the users either from a user list on the Terra station, if you create, uh, you will go in and create users on the Terra station, or if you connect it to Windows Active Directory, it'll pull uh, users from your Active Directory domain, and you can assign rights to those individuals based on their Active Directory username. And we'll look a little bit, look that, uh, look at that a little bit uh, later. When we pull our demo up, I'll, I'll give you an idea of what that looks like. Right now, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and launch a poll. And we're just trying to get some feedback from everybody, see what uh, your use cases are. Yeah, so while everybody's taking the poll, I just wanted to talk about a couple of key use case scenarios where we've seen a lot of success with the, the Terra Station 5010 products. Um, I had already talked about using them as a virtualized uh, target uh, for you know your servers or your SANs that are, are running uh, some type of virtualized uh, software. Um, certainly, offsite and disaster recovery are, are very key. Uh, NAS provides a very simple and easy um, solution there. Specifically, a lot of companies uh, are, are looking to get their data off-site, not just um, to, say, another Terra station, which is definitely possible with a replication feature. Essentially, there you've created a private cloud, but they're looking to use some type of uh, third-party cloud service. So uh, Gary's going to show a couple of options later on in the presentation and the demo portion where we actually have native integration in the 5010 and 3010 units with third-party cloud support directly in the uh, user interface. Um, obviously, file sharing and local backup are, are mainstays of, uh, uh, of NAS. That's uh, why the product was uh, primarily invented many years ago. Um, video surveillance, especially for police departments, municipalities, uh, small businesses, large businesses, is the fastest growing area in the market for uh, large data. Um, unfortunately, not everyone has the budget to go out and buy hundreds of terabytes, if not petabytes, of tier one uh, storage from your, your favorite sand vendor. So Buffalo and, and NAS products play extremely well, especially the 5010. We've had a lot of success using our products as complementary storage products for your SAN that is uh, running your video management software. It's driving the cameras, it's managing the surveillance network, and our boxes are simply connected as high performance backup targets for large data pools. So 100 terabytes, 200 terabytes, multiple petabytes, uh, we've started participating in very large projects like that. Um, those, again, it doesn't just have to be municipal governments uh, like police departments, airports. Uh, those are some of the clients that we've had very good success with. If you are one of those clients and you'd like to have an internal reference to another uh, municipal government, say like a, a you know, police department or an airport, I'm sure we could help uh, arrange that if you'd like to talk to that. But more importantly, every small business is doing it now for liability reasons alone. So now we've uh, taken some time and we've taken a look at the, um, the poll results. They're available on the screen. Um, certainly not a surprise, but uh, basic server and workstation backup targets, 85% of you um, are using the products. Yesterday's poll, just for comparison purposes, 
Uh, very similar, 89% of the audience yesterday was using NAS for that product. Uh, I mentioned surveillance storage. Uh, the group yesterday was a little bit higher at 41%, but still 33% is uh, a growing trend uh, for the past couple of years and certainly is not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, using your uh, your NAS as an uh, iSCSI storage target, almost exactly right on. Yesterday's group was at 46%, today you're at 45 and then from a virtualized uh, environment perspective, a little bit lower today. That group was uh, in the mid 40s yesterday, but again, that just depends on the, the type of use case that you have. But certainly, again, the 5010 products were almost primarily designed to be very high performance, iSCSI backup targets for multiple or concurrent virtualized uh, backup jobs going on at the same time. So they're definitely able to handle very high workloads without having degraded performance. Um, so I'd encourage you, if that's your role, please reach out. We'll, we'll definitely want to make sure that uh, you have as much information as you need. And then simple file serving capabilities, of course. That's uh, the main reason NAS was invented many years ago. <coughs> so now we'll turn the presentation to the TerraStation 3010 uh, product family. And um, one thing I will point out, Gary will go through in a little bit more detail, you're going to notice a lot of similarities between this product and the 5010, especially at the software level. Um, they are sharing a unified operating system. So all the features that are in the 5010 are available in the 3010. If you have the need for higher performance scenarios, we're definitely going to encourage you to look at the 5010 products. Again, they're just much more robust from an internal component perspective. They have the native 10 gig capabilities uh, included. Um, the 3010s are definitely designed to be your SMB value class box. They are going to meet the majority of the SMB scenarios that are out there in the market. Um, they are delivering a, a very high value compared to the price point um, and the performance that they, that they supply. Again, just like the 5010, all the hard drives are included. For those of you who are past TerraStation 3000 customers, uh, one of the major hardware improvements with these products is the move to all NAS grade hard drives. All the units are going to have uh, NAS hard drives fully populated. Another hardware improvement, or I should say change, is the introduction of a two bay unit. So again, the picture on the upper left hand portion of uh, the product assortment there is a two bay unit set up in RAID 1 and it ships as small as four terabytes so that provides you with two terabytes of usable storage in a RAID 1 arrangement and then you have a four bay desktop and a one U rack mount. Um, the units, uh, the one U rack and the desktop go up to 24 terabytes of total storage capacity. So there's not terribly a lot of other hardware changes besides, um, you know, just the, the chassis changes and then slightly lower processing performance that I already talked to you about. So I will turn it back over to Gary to talk more about um, the software features. Again, many of them will be very similar, um, so he'll point that out as well. All right. Thank you, Bill. So, yeah, I just want to uh, reiterate what something that Bill's talking about, the shared firmware across the 3010-5010 line. One of the things that enables us to do is respond to uh, respond to any issues much more quickly, reduce development cycles. If we want to add a new feature, uh, they're added across both lines at the same time. If you know next week uh, a new you know a new vulnerability is uh, uh, is announced and everybody's scrambling to go fix those, we only have to do that development cycle once for both lines. Get it out, get it fixed. I want to talk a little bit about Performance. Uh, I know the TerraStation 3400 was a very popular product. Um, we're now down at, at you know while supplies last on those, and uh, but a lot of people put them to good use. I will say that this device, the, the 3410 specifically, is what I tested against, is a little over twice as fast as the old TerraStation 3400. So it's a huge important performance improvement uh, over the old 3400 uh, systems. 
and it actually, in some cases, may outperform our, the, the last line of 5,000, uh, Terra Station 5000 series. Not nearly, not as fast as the, the 5010, but very, very respectable. So if you're, you know, if you're looking for something that's a, a great value, this is really it. All right. So um, I'll, I'll just jump in real quick. Gary mentioned an important note there. I've already said that these are the direct replacements for the 3000 and the 5000 series, their predecessors. Um, both units have been made um, or will be made end of life status shortly in the next certainly several months if they haven't already been made. If you're working with any of the old products and you must have the old products but and you cannot accept the new products, please reach out to Buffalo as quickly as possible so we can help you um, make sure that we secure the stock that's necessary to, to meet your requirements for your projects. Um, I failed to mention at the very beginning of the webinar as well, please use the question and answer uh, capability in, in the um, console if you have any questions. We want it to be as interactive of a webinar as possible. At the very end during the question and answer session, we will address as many of the uh, questions as we can get to. Um, and we'll provide an answer to everybody, certainly after the, uh, the webinar, um, for those of you who've asked questions. One question that just came in was actually a great one, and I'll mention it now. All of the new Terra stations, just like the old Terra stations, but all the new 3010 and 5010 products are TAA compliant, which means that they're trade compliant to sell to federal government uh, type projects. The next slide uh, will again focus on some of the, the software features as well as, um, uh, I don't think there's any hardware features, but definitely emphasize some of the hardware or software differences from the old systems to the new system. So I'm going to turn it over to Gary again to go through these. All right. Thanks, Bill. <coughs> the, the first couple of bullets we've talked about a little bit and we'll go into a little more uh, in depth later on. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down to the third bullet here and talk about the rapid raid, build, raid rebuild. So these units are uh, considerably faster at doing a rebuild than our previous units. And you see that number up to 80%. Uh, that's a little bit of a conservative figure on my part, um, trying not to set expectations too high. It depends on, obviously, a lot of things are dependent on that environment, you know, how much uh, use it's getting while the rebuild's going on. But I, I can say that I've seen this, uh, the 5410 model rebuild a a uh, RAID 5 built on four two terabyte drives, uh, rebuild a, from a single drive failure in under an hour. Uh, that's down from what may have been the last, you know, in the last iteration units, sometimes 18 to 24 hours. And, you know, if you have a lot of heavy use going on, could be up to 36 hours. The longer your, the rebuild takes, the more problems you can run into, right? So if a second driver to go offline during the rebuild, then you've got, you wind up in a data loss situation. So by being able to reduce that, those rebuild times dramatically, we've reduced the danger that your data is in during a rebuild. I also want to talk about generally just OS improvements. If you uh, look at the comparison sheet between the uh, last generation units and these, you notice that several features are not there anymore. Most of those were what we would consider consumer-oriented features. Uh, so these, is, these have been streamlined to be, you know, have your, your business-related features and business focused features only. And the result is that, the, in general, the system is just quite a bit faster just at the OS level. I want to drop down and look real quick at the, uh, like I said, we talked a little bit about the duplex firmware, uh, how it simplifies your OS recovery and, and can reduce downtime for you. Also, like I said, uh, like I said earlier, reduces the possibility of data loss. We talked a little bit about boot authentication already. The last item there, uh, both of these units come from the factory set to uh, retrieve the last power state. So in the event of a power loss, when power is restored, they should uh, automatically boot back up and come back up running. The, in the last generation with the 5000, that was kind of a tricky setting to get to. And with the 3400, you couldn't do it at all unless it was connected to a UPS. Obviously, we, we recommend that you have these connected to a UPS at all times anyway. But in the event that you don't, or the event that your power outage lasts long enough that the UPS goes offline too, as soon as power is restored, the unit comes back up online. You don't have somebody have somebody go around and press the power button on it to get it to come back. 
All right. And we'll turn it back over to, well, no, we won't. I'm not turning it back over to Bill at all. Uh, getting ready to uh, go right into our demo here. Give me just a moment. And let's see. All right, there we go. So this is the interface for the uh, Terra Station. I've got this hooked up to a Terra Station 5410, and you'll see that the interface looks very similar. First thing I want to do is I want to point out I've got uh, I, I ran this a little bit earlier. I just want to show you the results. This is using Crystal Dismark, which is a, a fairly common tool that we use to uh, measure throughput. <clears throat> and you can see our read and write speeds there. Now, this is obviously on a going over a 10 gig switch and on a closed network, so there was no other traffic on the network. So I kind of have this in optimal conditions, but you can see our, our read and write speeds are, are uh, very, very good over 10 gigabit there. Now, let's see, let's look at the next thing we want to look at. Let me pull up, this is our share. And I want to go through real quick and just uh, all right, give it a moment here while it retrieves. All right, what I want to do is I'm going to add, and I'm going to see my location I'm pulling up from here is from the TS5410. So I haven't created a user, but I'm just going to pull up the uh, admin. I can't find it. I have to type it all in. And I can go in here and I can give admin full control. I can get granular here. I can have read, not write, et cetera. And it's, again, exactly the same as you would have for, uh, for any Windows share on a Windows server. So I can turn that on, and you can see that now my uh, TerraStation admin user has full control. I can go in and remove some of those later if I want to. But I just wanted to show you that real quick. Next, let's take a look at, uh, I want to take a look at our web services here under cloud storage. This is going to be where you go in to set up Amazon S3. So I'm just going to go through that setup real quick. It's, it's very, very quick to set up. So the first thing I want to know here is my bucket name. Well, I go over to my S3 console and see that my bucket name is Buffalo S3 Test. That's the, Buffalo, uh, the bucket I'm going to use. So I'm going to type that in here. I need my access key ID and my secret access key. I'm going to download those from Amazon once I create a, a, an IAMS user, but I happen to have those you know, downloaded earlier. We pull them up here, I'm gonna grab that. There's my access key ID here. And there's my secret access key, and I'll be revoking these later. Now, it wants me to create a new folder, so I'm just gonna call this folder S3 test. Give that just a moment. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable recycle bin for this new folder because I don't want to replicate my recycle bin stuff up there. Click OK. It will go through this little process of creating the uh, new folder and uh, confirming the uh, settings with Amazon, making sure that everything's good, good to go there. All right, and you see that only took me a couple of minutes to get that set up. So now I'm going to go back over here, and let's pull up these are the folders. Let me refresh this, and it'll show my new folder there, my S3 test folder, which is currently empty. So I'm just going to grab this little folder here and copy it over there. Over 10 gigabit. Over 10 gigabit. Of course, it's also Windows file copy, so we'll do Windows file copy drag and drop, so that's not terribly ever going to be real quick. So I'm going to go over here and let me just refresh my screen on my bucket here and see that my folder is already up there. I can drill down and look at all the, uh, this is actually a, a you know, firmware updater that I uh, copied over there. But you can see that's very, very quick, very easy to set up. All right, and... And that's it for the demo, really. There's not much to show you there, how quick and easy it is. Uh, I would go through the Dropbox setup, but 
The network I'm on won't allow me to contact Dropbox. It's actually quicker and easier than the Amazon S3 setup. Uh, if you go through it, um, ah, let's turn it on first. It's just a matter of uh, authorizing. Uh, I'm not going to go through it. It's just authorizing, uh, giving, telling Dropbox that you're authorizing this device to talk to Dropbox. It's very, very quick and easy. It's even quicker than the Amazon S3 setup. All right, thanks, Gary. Uh, I really personally appreciate you sharing uh, your personal password in uh, Amazon. Access. Like I said, I will be revoking uh, revoking those uh, those keys as soon as we get done with this webinar. <laughs> All right. So the next part of our webinar is um, is going to actually just briefly talk about the support uh, features that Buffalo uh, offers. Ben Delarier. Delaurier, our director of support, is going to handle that. And I just really wanted to emphasize Buffalo is much different than other vendors in the market. We really encourage you guys to, to reach out to us, use our resources. Let's make sure that the product is the right fit for your scenario. Ben? Thanks. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Ben Delaurier. I'm the director of tech support. Uh, one of the things that Buffalo really tries to accomplish to set itself apart in the industry is for a, uh, a complimentary warranty, we provide uh, phone support over uh, 24 by 7 phone support, which uh, for most uh, manufacturers in the, uh, in the industry where they don't provide a secondary warranty uh, at an additional charge or a secondary skew for more warranty, uh, that's something that is not generally provided by those guys. Uh, so we have 24 by 7 support in English uh, based in North America. These guys are in San Antonio, Texas, and in Montreal, Canada. Um, and, um, you know, you can get a hold of them in English and Spanish uh, during business hours. Uh, so uh, Spanish is during business hours. We also have a dedicated partner support line um, for our VAR partners uh, to get, uh, you know, uh, just as fast as we can on the phone. The average wait time online is something like 70 seconds. Uh, we, we do our absolute best to be as available as possible to our customers. Uh, one of the things you'll also see on this slide deck is that we have a, uh, a knowledge base online that uh, Gary mostly wrote. Um, and we have um, a walkthrough of basically every functionality that the Terra Station will do and how to do it in a very step-by-step -step fashion. Um, so really the, the key takeaway there, guys, is that we're not just in the business of moving metal. We want to make sure that after you buy it, you have a good experience with it, or if your end users uh, need help, that we can provide that help uh, in as timely fashion as possible. Um, so thanks. Okay, so kind of playing off of the... Uh the post-sale support um, is, I would just like to emphasize, again, Buffalo is available for you before the sale, after the sale. Um, I promise that I provide our direct telephone number. Um, uh, you can see it as the second bullet on the bottom of this slide, as well as the email address of how you can reach the sales team. Um, again, as ben, ben mentioned, these are distinguishing award-winning features of the Buffalo sales model. We have definitely been recognized in the industry. Um, typically when we uh, receive these awards, we're, we're competing, it looks like, in these uh, programs against much, much larger, multi-high billion dollar organizations. Um, so definitely recognizable tier one vendors. And Buffalo comes out um, very respectfully, if not on top, on a lot of the customer satisfaction and um, uh, quality of support uh, scoring uh, that we receive. Um, if anybody does want to take advantage of demo units or not for resale units, if you're a reseller, please reach out to our team. We have programs uh, that can help you there. Uh, certainly, um, if you have specific use cases, we want to make sure before you roll the product out in, uh, in these scenarios that it is the right product. And sometimes we can all verbally confirm everything's a match, but we can't 
you know, give it the final thumbs up until it's actually in the uh, the actual real world scenario. So I do appreciate Gary uh, providing us with some uh, demos this afternoon. Um, specifically for me, <laughs> I'm a sales guy, so I've got to I've got to face the music um, with uh, with customers in a real world setting all the time. So I appreciate showing you guys uh, that Gary showed you guys real world performance and throughput. Um, a lot of organizations will will tout their theoretical marketing limits, <laughs> and uh, we definitely want to set expectations up front. And those 10 gig results are definitely impressive. So I mentioned earlier um, at the very beginning of the webinar that our marketing team had provided a very nice offering. So. While supplies last, anyone buying a TerraStation 5010, any of these SKUs that has attended either yesterday or today's webinar, can receive a free 10 gig switch. We will definitely follow up um, uh, the webinars by sending a, an email to thank everyone. We will have uh, information on how you can access the recorded version of this webinar, as well as the, all the handouts that are in the console and full instructions on how you can secure your free switch if you are uh, looking to buy one of the TerraStation 5010 units. Um, okay, so I'm just being handed this right now. Our TerraStation winner from today's webinar is John Morlock. John, please respond through the question and answer or the chat session providing, uh, I don't have any of your company information here, so uh, perhaps a telephone number, an email address, and maybe your business name. Um, we will definitely follow up with you before the end of today to reach out and make sure that um, uh, we've got all your shipping information to get the TerraStation out to you. <laughs> 